Hello, praise the Lord, God is good. We interact with God's word and it is our life, it's our food, it's our water. This time we again interact with a portion from the book of Luke chapter 7. And the issue is about Jesus and the faith of the Roman centurion. It is something that I've read and it encouraged me. And we are going to share majorly two things from this portion of scripture. And the Bible says that after Jesus had finished saying all these things in the hearing of all the people, he entered Capernaum. Now a centurion had a servant who was sick and at the point of death, who was highly valued by him. And in verse 3 of chapter 7, the Bible says, When the centurion heard about Jesus, he sent to him elders of the Jews, asking him to come and heal his servant. And when these servants came to Jesus, they pleaded with him earnestly, saying, He is worthy to have you do this for him, for he loves our nation, and he is the one who built us our synagogue. And Jesus went with them. When he was not far from the house, the centurion sent friends, saying to him, Lord, do not trouble yourself, for I am not worthy to have you come under my roof. Therefore, I did not presume to come to you, but say the word, and let my servant be healed. For I too am a man set under authority, with the soldiers under me. I say to one, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes, and to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard these things, he marveled at him. And turning to the crowd, Jesus said to those that followed him, I tell you, not even in Israel have I found such faith. And when those who had been sent returned to the house, they found the servant well. Friends, this is a portion. This is a scripture that I have come with. You know, many, many times we have shared about it. We have preached about it. We have testified about it. But the faith of the centurion, the centurion who was a Roman soldier, comes very, very live in our lives. And I don't mind whether you have heard about it, whether you have shared about it, whether you have preached about it, or whether I have preached about it. But every time it comes, it comes with freshness. And this Roman centurion does something that we all ought to do. And the message that I come with in this chapter Luke, chapter 7 of St. Luke is very, very clear that faith works. And all of us Christians, all of us believers are called upon to have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ because faith is the seed that the Lord desires from us. When we exhibit it, many, many things happen in our lives. This centurion had heard about Jesus Christ. This centurion had heard about the works of our Lord Jesus Christ. And now this time around, he sends people to go and meet Jesus because Jesus was somewhere. And the Bible is saying that after Jesus had finished saying very many things in the hearing of very many people, he was entering somewhere, a town called Capernaum. And people meet him on behalf, I, mean, I repeat, on behalf of the Roman centurion. And they plead with Jesus to go and heal his servant. And now the purpose of this passage is, I have already mentioned, faith 
works. And so I implore you, all brothers and sisters, to have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And two, to have good relations with other people. Whether you're a leader, whether you're a father, whether you're a mother, or whether whoever you are, have good relations with other people. And number three, work good. Do good, and it will come back to you. Now, these people come to Jesus Christ, and it's something that um, encourages me to talk about it in verse 4, that when they came to Jesus, listen to me, they pleaded with him earnestly. They pleaded with Jesus earnestly, and they said to him, this man is worthy of your help because he has done many great things for us. And so, brethren, I just wanted to bring it to you that do good and it will come to back to you in some other way. This man was a leader. This man was a national. This man had other people that he led under him at his, in, and in his heart. And therefore, when they come, they plead with Jesus, do good to him because he has been doing good to us. And so, friends, that is a very, very serious point that I wanted to bring to you, that while we are still in this life, while we are still in this life here, we need to do good because it will come back to us in some other way. Of course, while exhibiting faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, who is a healer, in the Lord Jesus Christ, who is a provider, in the Lord Jesus Christ, who does good, and he brings life into us when we are not having it. This person was sick and was not well. And so Jesus was to bring back the life of this person. And so when Jesus had, he went with them. And so another point that I wanted to put here is when we ask, our Lord Jesus Christ does it hesitate, of course, in faith. The reason why he himself said, ask and you'll receive, knock and the door will be opened and seek and you'll find. And so friends, why must we pray? Why, why must we ask? Why must we follow the Lord Jesus Christ? Because our Lord Jesus Christ never gives up on us. When we request, when we ask, he gives it to us. The reason why he encourages you and me, ask and you'll receive, seek and you'll find, knock and the door will be opened. In verse 6, the Bible says that these people, when they were sent, they came. And when they came, they told Jesus what had brought them. And when they told him what had brought them, because they had the faith that was required, Jesus went with them. And so I am here to encourage you, to encourage myself, to know that the Lord Jesus Christ is always on the ready. It's only us that do not do the right thing. But when we do the right thing, Jesus Christ is always on the ready to help. Jesus is on the ready to heal. Jesus is always on the ready to provide what we require. And so it is something that I thought that actually as it speaks to me, it also speaks to you, my brother, my sister, that he went with them. And, and so it's a matter of faith. It's a matter of doing the right thing. And it's a matter of doing the right thing at the right time. And when these people heard that Jesus was somewhere, they didn't hesitate to go to him. And so, remember, before he left for heaven, and we know that actually he's there preparing presents for us, he said to us that I will be with you always. And so it is something that always encourages us, that our Lord Jesus Christ is with us. And so when, we, when he is with us, you and I, are required to do the right thing, go to him, and he'll always answer our prayer. Now, what other thing amazes me is when he was about to reach the place where the sick person was, Jesus was stopped by the centurion himself. He said, no, 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 Lord, you are, I'm not worthy for you to come to my house. Just mention a word. And the word that Jesus says has returns. And so our Lord Jesus Christ, his word, is life. And of course, it is life because even in Isaiah chapter 55, verse 10, the Bible says that the word of God, when it comes, doesn't return empty. 
that when it comes, it yields fruit. He compares it to the rain that comes from up. That when it comes, it waters the ground and it gives life to the soil and the soil produces food, food to the eater. And so friends, this is the message that God's word is life and God's word is light. And so the Lord Jesus Christ is also amazed by the faith of the centurion. And so because he is amazed, he sends the word and the person who was sick, the person in question was healed. And this portion is also likened to the one in Matthew chapter 8, verses 5 to 13. And so friends, even when Jesus is not here with us in the body, it is the message that I'm bringing to you. Even when he is up in heaven preparing for us places, he said, I'm going to prepare places for you. And I will come back and take you there. Now here, we interact with his word. His word is a saving word, a word that works, a word that changes things. Remember, God in Genesis chapters 1 and 2, there is a lot that is talking, talked about the word of God. The word that creates the word that brings life, the word that brings order. And so my brother, my sister, we need it to be recreated. We need it to be, you know, to be re-energized. We need it to be reorganized in our life. During these times of COVID, there are many things that are not right. And so we plead with you, O Lord Jesus Christ, that the word that you spoke into the house of the centurion, that he speaks it, that you speak to what? You speak the same word to us, that there will be order, there will be organization, there will be life in this um, tumultuous generation, in these tumultuous times. And so, my friends, this is the only portion that I wanted to read, the way I read it verbatim, and I want to ask that the Lord God, who is ever present, to be present with us during these difficult times, during this difficult generation, and so that his healing word will be in us. Many of us have gone through this COVID and have fallen sick, but thank God for those that have actually come back to life, that have been healed, and even other ailments, even other sicknesses, pressure, diabetes, name them, malaria, cough, you know, everything. We pray that God is word that heals. Like Isaiah 55 verse 10 says that the word of God does not return empty. That God is word will not return empty. That God is word that healed the centurion's servant will not return empty in your life, in your family, in your, you know, in everything that you do. And so friends, this is something that I wanted you to think that we need to keep encouraging ourselves. You encourage yourself like I do. You speak like I do. You pray like I do, but most importantly, God is word. Please do read God is word and continue in fellowship with it because it changes things. You know, are you crying? Are you finding life very difficult? Are you devastated? Are you anxious? Are you worried? The word of God is life. And so to the centurion, it brought life. But of course, remember, at the beginning when I said that he did good and the people ran to Jesus to plead with Jesus to come and heal his servant because he was a noble man. He, was, he, he wished others good. And so as we interact with God's word above, we also have to interact with others around us and do good to them. Speak something that brings life. And so that when something bad also happens, when you're also in need, someone will run on your behalf. Someone will run for you. Someone will plead for you. And so it is something that I have desired one of these days. Despite challenges that we have, we need to have to put other people at our heart and wish them well. Time will come when they will also wish us well and run on our behalf. And this can mean someone praying for you. And so I just want to encourage us, encourage one another, pray for one another, stand in for one another, so that where I am not, someone is praying for me. Where you are not, I am praying for you. I am pleading with the Lord Jesus Christ on your behalf. 
And so this is um, one by one we shall get there. But it is our desire, it's my desire that God will continue speaking to us during this generation of individualism, of people minding their own business. Someone wants to, it's me and me alone. No, may we God help us so that this centurion teaches us a lesson that our Lord Jesus Christ's word will also teach us a lesson that we are interacting with his word and this word is life like it healed in the centurion's house. It will heal my heart, it will heal your heart, it will do much more good everywhere. And so my brothers and sisters, may God bless us and continue speaking to us. And in the time to come, life everlasting. But let us begin, let us continue doing good here while we are still in this life. In the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So I wish you the best. I am the very Reverend Eredad Milton Shisa the Vicar and somebody in St. Andrew's Cathedral who wishes you the best during this season that God is word will continue healing in us and that we shall also continue doing good and that other people will benefit on our behalf and that we shall also be benefit on behalf of others. And may God continue being with us now and always in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. <music>